Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, beautiful people from around the world, I'm your host, yours truly, Alicia G. I sing, I dance, I also DJ, all social media, my Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and more, all Alicia G World. Be sure you are following me and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Put that little uh, bell on. Are you guys ready? Get those notifications on. Boom, boom, baby. We have an exclusive interview with oh. 20. How are we doing, beautiful people? Welcome to Spill the Tea with Alicia G. We have an amazing, special, talented, handsome, professional, pro basketball player. <laughs> 2020. How are you, Mr. 2020? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I am doing absolutely wonderful. Thank you for joining me on Spill the Tea with Alicia G. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. So this is your, your fifth installment of this show? It is my fifth ever featured show of Spill the Tea with Alicia G. With our special guest, the 2020 himself. <laughs> Guys, you're following Sherry, follow myself here, follow the amazing 2020, and share this live with your friends. We're going to get litty, juicy, bossy, big delicious, and uh, we're going to spill some tea. Maybe we'll even knock it over. All right. All right, Mr. 2020. Now, what do I call you? Do I call you 20? Do I call you 2020? You just call me 20. 20 is fine. 20. 20 it is. Uh, may I ask what your first name is? My first name is Don. Don. Don, yeah. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure, Don, to have you here, aka Mr. Twenty. <laughs> okay. Nice to meet you, so, Yeshua. Where Where were you born? So I'm, I was born in Windsor, Ontario, uh, in Canada. So right across from Detroit, Michigan. Now, have you lived in Canada all your life, or? Um, I lived in Canada most of my life. Um, you know, I traveled after, you know, I got out of high school and started going to college. So, I traveled, you know, I went to Central Michigan, so I lived in the States for a little bit. I lived in Toledo. Um, and then from there, I, I traveled, shit, Spain. I've been to, um... Ireland. I've been, I've been a lot of places. Just you know, going back and forth, playing ball, and doing different things. I've also, you know, lived here like farther up in Ontario, right? So, because we're not like America, we don't go state to state. We stay in our our province. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Now, growing up, did you have any brothers, sisters, the only child? Or? Yeah, actually, I have. Uh, I just had one brother. He was seven years younger than me. Okay. Yeah, so we didn't really uh, mesh because you know, I was always the older brother, and then yeah, just having a, a younger brother is just annoying as shit. No. <laughs> I'm actually I'm an only child, oh, I, so I I don't know how that. Stuff is, but yeah. Um, so, growing up in school, were you known as the popular kid or What's the that? troublemaker? You got the volume for that? Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Like growing up in school, were you like a troublemaker? Oh, did I lose volume? Were you a prankster? Were you? Can you hear me now? I'm good now. I lost volume for a second. Yeah. Hey, we're good. We're good. <laughs> Guys, I'm showing love y'all so much. So growing up, ooh, the boom 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 coming in hot. Guys, it over. Thank you. <laughs> growing up in school, were you like a troublemaker? A prankster with the popular one the ladies man well I, like i knew everybody in my city right so i was like you know popular to my city school i was more of a yeah i was a troublemaker i was kind of a troublemaker i was 
the best thing about, you know, when you play sports in school and you do stuff, you don't really got to go to class, right? <laughs> you can go sit in the cafeteria, do what you do and just thing. But, um, yeah, in high school, it was more of like a troublemaker. Um, but I had to, you know, do a lot of, you know, we had practices back to back and it was, that took up a lot of time, but when I was not, you know, playing in the gym, I was being, yeah, probably a ladies man. <laughs> ladies man, ladies man it is. Um, did, what was like your best subject, worst subject? My best subject? Um, I really liked math. Math was always, I loved math. It just it was because I was, I have a really good memory. So I can, you know, numbers, I can keep that, um, it's, it's easy for me. You know, math is, math was one of my strong suits. My worst subject though would be, cause I went to a Catholic school and I, Oh, really? And I really hated religion. <laughs> I actually, um, grew up in a private Catholic school and they were so strict with the uniforms, you know, more than like two or three inches above the knee, little skirts and all that. And then, yeah. So. No, I'm actually 40 years old, I'm not 35. Thank you. And everyone showing love. Thank you guys so much. Ooh. Yeah. So we, yeah, we had, Ooh, to, we had to wear uniforms too. Right. And, um, oh. that's, that's one thing that's, it's good, good in high school. And it's not right. Cause it's like, all you do in high school, when you wear a uniform, it's all about the shoes, right? You got to have the flashiest shoes because that's the only thing that's going to stand out from the other person. Like when I grew up doing the whole, like, you know, uniforms every single day, all the like, other kids, they couldn't stand it. I loved it. Yeah. You know why? Cause, it, Cause I never knew what to wear every day in a public school. Like what would I wear every day in a public school? So I actually really liked it in a way. Yeah. I really did. I didn't mind. Then I went to a public high school and what do I wear? What do I, wear? I never knew what to wear. So I, I like the uniforms actually. Yeah. Like well, you got things too. In public schools, you know, you get more of the bullying because, you know, you got somebody, um, you know, if you're not wearing an outfit or you're not, you're not wearing the top of the line outfits, you know, because in public school, you see those kids, you got the one kids that are wearing Lululemon the whole time. And then you got the other kids that are just wearing Walmart brand. And then all of a sudden those kids that are wearing Walmart brand are getting pegged out by the kids that are wearing Lululemon. So it's one of those bullshit. When you got all wear uniforms, you're all wearing the same shit. So it's actually, uh, you don't got to worry about stuff like that. That's why it says it comes in place with the shoes, right? Got to have the shoes. All about the shoes. <laughs> he loves the shoes. Now, back up, you said troublemaker. Like, what type of trouble did you get into in high school? Uh, it's just... Like, what's the worst? Thing? Just basically, you know, trouble with the ladies and, you know, being a player, doing doing crazy stuff and, you know, not really uh, caring. Because me, I've never had a criminal record. I've never done nothing like that. I've never been to jail or nothing. Um, That's good. Stable. That's good. Well, especially, you know... You need to have a good passport to bid over across the border. Because if you, you got a criminal record, I can't go to the States, right? So that's the one thing that's, you know, you always had to be in line and keep, you know, you can't fight. If you do fight, then you got to make sure you don't get in trouble, you're caught with it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Be smart about it. Be smart about it. All right. So I know you played, uh, you know, uh, basketball. Any other sports besides basketball yeah, or play, just like 100%? So I still currently play baseball. I play hardball. Um, but with COVID, it was a thing. But I still play baseball. It's just more of like a, you know, like a men's semi thing, semi league. Um, so it's not really a thing. When I was in, I did a two sports uh, coming up. Windsor Stars, there you go. That's uh, one of the teams when I grew up. Um, so I also played, you know, the Expos. So that's cool. We got ID three three five knows all about Windsor. <laughs> it knows the teams. So those are the baseball teams that are here when you're growing up. But uh, 
I played baseball and I decided to go to basketball instead. So both sports, I was played two in high school. So right out of high school, did you have a job? Like what was your first job? So here's my first job. It's going to be funny because I was a hustler and it was while I was in high school. Like, but there's a little bike called a Dickie D bike. And this Dickie D bike, I used to go to all the ballparks and I would sell ice cream. It's called Dickie D bike. And you'd ride a bike and it had a little ice cream thing. And you'd, you'd make so much damn money and get free ice cream too. <laughs> so it was like, that's what was my very first job. That was my hustler job. Um, so if you could picture 20 riding the Dickie D bikes, ringing the bells, that's what I did when I was little. The ice cream man. The ice cream. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously we know you played professional basketball. How did you get involved in it? Like, so, I'm going to play pros. Like, no, what I went, was that so I went to, like, what happened? I went to Catholic Central High School and I played, you know, there, but when I moved over to another high school, Assumption, everything took off from there because then I became, you know, the standout at that school and, you know, I had scouts calling, people calling, and then all of a sudden it was like, would you like to come? So, and then Central Michigan said, you know, we'd like to offer you, you know, a scholarship to come over and play. So I went over there the first year, I redshirted. Um, second year, I got some action and then the third year it took off from there. And then it was just more of, you know, I knew I wasn't going to make the NBA or nothing like that, but still semi pro to go play overseas. Why not go for it? So I decided to go for it and just, you know, run with it. And then I was, I left my city for a good, you know, seven, eight years. And then I came back and then I had kid and then, and from there it was like, okay, I need to settle down and stay here in Windsor in this area. And then I ended up playing, you know, we had a Windsor Express team that just started in the city. I ended up going in there and being able to walk on and play there because they do tryouts. So I ended up playing for Windsor Express and then uh, out in London as well. Very, very cool. Guys, ladies, gentlemen, if you're just tuning in, Welcome to Spill the Tea with Alicia G, with our special featured guest, the one and only 2020 himself. Share your following, sharing your tapping on that screen, guys. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. <laughs> what position did you play in basketball? So I'm, I'm a point guard. I've always been a point guard. I'm a floor general. I've always been the most vocal on the court. You know, I'm, I'm talking and screaming the whole time when I'm on the court. Um... <laughs> Uh, what'd you say? If you didn't pause when you're saying all that, it would all rhyme. Oh. Um, so I was always a point guard, you know, and I was always a distributor. So it just, I enjoyed passing the ball and getting other people set up and doing stuff. So it was definitely, you know, that was my calling to do. And I'm, I'm AKA the boss. yeah. And my height, I'm not, I'm not the, the tallest player. We would play with some seven footers, right? So. Can I ask how tall you are? I'm six foot two now. I think I'm shrinking now, actually. I'm thinking, fuck, I'm getting smaller because I'm getting older. <laughs> this COVID weight, well, COVID I, weight got me shrinking. I'm five, three and a quarter. So I'd be like, hi. <laughs> so I'm itty bitty. So that's really tall. Yeah. Did you, thank you. Um, so you obviously practiced hours and hours. How many hours a week and how many days a week would you say you practice? So it was so it was an everyday thing. You know, it was Monday through Sunday, every day. You know, you'd go oh get your, your reps in. We also had, you know, once you get to college level, you got, you know, a handler. So that person is actually with you. So if you go, say you go back home or you go to places, they'll come with you. And, you know, you used to go to the St. Anna Center for a couple hours, you know. You can just get the cardio in, run around the track or do some skipping or, you know, put up some shots. But it was always everyday thing. And that was for a while. That's the only way to keep in shape. Um, did, were you on any special diets or anything yeah, like that? Yeah, so obviously, obviously when I was doing that, you know, you, you're going to be on a diet. You know, it was more, you know, salad and shit, not a lot of meat. 
you know, chicken and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, there was no, you know, you couldn't drink pop. You couldn't drink, you know, smoke, do any of that. Now that I'm done playing, now I feel like everything I didn't get to do, I want, right? So I'm like, shit, I want to pop. I want this. You're living it up. Living it up. My kids, my kids got me doing that, right? So it's definitely uh, one of those things, you know, that they want ice cream. Uh, bet your ass I'm eating some ice cream. <laughs> yeah, I have a little sweet tooth one it's here and there. Yeah. Right? So craziest story playing professional pro ball. Tony wants that deal, but so um, craziest story would be when we're so I played for a team called Valencia and it was in Spain and we actually had to go from the airport and we had to drive through um, you know and we played an Israeli team and when we drove through there we had to be in a bulletproof bus and I swear to God I thought we were gonna die because I thought we were gonna get hijacked this you know this car came in front of the the bus stopped the whole bus made everybody you know thing and if that bus driver didn't, you know, back up and then start driving real crazy, yeah, I thought we were going to die because they tried to hijack us. That's the craziest thing that ever happened. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's scary. Oh, yeah. And it's no joke over there because some of that stuff, that, you know, especially if you're a Canadian, American, they will actually, you know, try to grab you just to, you know, try to get some kind of ransom money for you, right? So. Oh, my God. Yeah. And you're warned, you're warned about stuff like that. Uh, I don't know what it is like nowadays, but, you know, we were warned about stuff like that where, you know, nighttime, don't leave the hotel. Don't, you know, if you do leave, go in with somebody, make sure you buddy up or you have, uh, you know, security with you or anything like that because they will try to grab you. Um, so that was, that's one of those things that, you know, it's like out of a movie, but that shit really happened, right? So. I'm just, that was the crazy thing that ever happened. I never would have thought that. Oh my God, it's crazy. Yeah. Chills. <laughs> um, did you get along with the players and the coaches or did you guys actually bicker? Oh, no, no. I'm just, so I'm, the, the type of person I am, like in real life, like, you know, on, on the app, I'm the same way, right? I treat everybody equally until they cross my path and do something messed up. In real life, I'm the same way, you know, I'll, shit, I'll take my shirt off my back for my worst enemy. So it's like more of, I get along with everybody. I fit into every crowd. You know, I grew up, you know, where I grew up, it was so multicultural that, you know, I get along with every race, every ethnicity, every religion, just because it's all where I'm living. How about in fake life? I'm the same way in fake life here on Beagle. <laughs> I get along with everybody on here unless they cross my path. That makes sense. So don't piss them off, mm -hmm. <laughs> basically. Um, okay, so obviously you guys spent, you know, traveling, uh, all that type of stuff, you know, hotel rooms, any shenanigans, any crazy parties in the hotel rooms oh, yeah. ever happen? Thank you. Oh, let's spill that too. <laughs> yeah, oh, so... I actually have a crazy, you know, like a story even for like from high school because we went for a tournament and it was up in, uh, you know, Niagara Falls region. And we had, because I went to Catholic school, we had a priest, right? So the priest was our chaperone. Now, we snuck out of the room and went to this bar. We we're only, you know, 17 years old and we're we're sitting at this, you know, it's, it's called the Hive and it's this big ass bar and we're, you know, dancing my buddy gets drunk and he's like tore down drunk um all of a sudden we see this priest walk in we know it's uh, for us right and so we're like all trying to hide in the corners and yeah i swear when this priest grabbed this kid that was drunk and he grabbed him by the scruff of his neck and you seen this priest just drag this kid out oh my god we were scared shitless that was like that was some crazy shit back then because the, the priest was not playing <laughs> did, you, did you guys have like fake IDs to get in? Yeah, so we had fake IDs, yeah. Because in Canada, like, you got to be 19 here, right? It's not like 21 in the States, but. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 19. But still, 17, you could 
get away with it. So a lot of 17 year olds look like they're 19, especially nowadays. Shit. I don't know what's in the milk now. You see these kids that look like they're 15 and they're 25. It's crazy. Right? So it's, it's crazy. parties, drinking, all that type of stuff. Now, so now, now the funny part is I don't really drink. I don't drink no more. I don't, I don't smoke weed, none of that stuff. I, um, I try Anything to come do, We don't judge. Okay. I think Beagle has made me stop doing that type of stuff because, you know, I always got to be on camera talking and things. So it's like, I can't really drink or do that because it's like, I got to be aware. Now with these new rules, you got to be aware too. I don't want to get banned. Shit, got too much money on here to get banned. <laughs> very very true like that um out of like all your basketball playing days what was your best experience you can share with us like that highlight that oh my god moment oh my god moment was you know we won a, a championship and you know my my oldest son, he's, I think he, he was there to see it. And just the look on his face, you know, that, you know, my daddy just did that. You know, it, that was the, my, oh my God moment when I looked and see if he could carry on. Thank you, Bucky Blanks. Um, so that's my oh my God moment right there. Just because I want to pass it on to the kids, right? Because that's what I do now. Well, now that COVID's here, can't really do it because we can't get in the gym to teach these kids. Now that they opened up, you know some restrictions so maybe you know coming up for high school here we'll be able to get back in the gym hey, and teach them to to but um so that was the only thing just to see his face and you know because everything else i was always abroad right so when we were here it was one of those things that it was awesome thank you bucky that is awesome oh shit you can throw awesome. eyes and through another dragon okay Lighten you up, going drop it like it's hot and right <laughs> up to the boom, boom, baby. All right, so. Oh, Chef, you about to throw a drag? You went from playing. <laughs> you went from playing professional ball to Bigo. How did you find Bigo? Funny story how I found Bigo is. Get the. So the funny story how I found Bigo. So my son. Wanted me to download this game. It was, I don't know if you know the game where you shoot the bubbles, right? You just, it's a, so. it's a bubble shooter game, whatever. So I was downloading it and then an ad for this app came on and I just clicked it and I said, what the hell is this? And I clicked it and it installed. And then I went into the first thing I did was I went, I popped up into this panel and I got stuck and I didn't know how to get out. Mm -hmm. But luckily for me, it was Sir Hat and Sir Hat told me all about the app how it works. And I took little information from him. I took little information from thing. And I watched people like, um, you know, Marlins and all that. And I just studied, I studied the whole thing. Right. So, and then it was like, boom. So when it was my turn to become a host, I was already 10 steps ahead and I knew what to do. Right. So it was just one of those things that was perfect. Uh, what son are you talking about? Tyler. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just coming in, you all amazing, beautiful people, be sure you're following not only myself, but the amazing town, the 2020 in the house. You are listening to Spillity with Alicia G and our special guest, 2020. I know you guys aren't Sir Hat fans. I know nobody's Sir Hat fans over there in Karma. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, so when, I, so when Bigo. I first started Bigo, though, I wasn't Karma fan either, right? Because I was in Platinum Family. So it was like one of those things that we had that, that rivalry. So it was, it, it was, it was fun back then. They don't have that here on Beagle no more. Now everybody's, there's so many hosts. Everybody's just friends with everybody. Don't matter what family you're with, what badge you're with. So it's all good. Water under the bridge. Yes. Push out the negativity, pushing the positivity, the best it's come <laughs> just to believe. So I take it, I'm assuming, do you full-time Beagle or is this a part-time thing? Um, well, because I have an agency on here, um, now it's, it's full time, right? So it's more besides because of COVID since COVID it's full time before COVID, you know, I was, I was running basketball camps doing, uh, you know, I was teaching Filipino kids how to play basketball here in the city. And, um, 
it was actually, you know, it was kind of lucrative for that. So I would do that. And then, um, other than that, that odds and odd jobs, like, you know, roofing and stuff like that, but more, um, Beagle is now my full time because shit, you know how much money we make on here. <laughs> Digo, digo, digo. Boom, boom, digo. So what made you start an agency and family? You went from being a host to all of a sudden. So actually, uh, so I was running, um, you know, uh, Jack's agency, my agent's agency. I helped him start the agency and get it up and running. And then Beagle actually came to me and asked me if I wanted, when they, when Canada became a, you know, they wanted to push Canada and make it a, an option and split the regions. Beagle came to me and asked me if I wanted an agency and to start, you know, with the family. So I jumped at the chance to, you know, I didn't have to apply for an agency. They just gave it to me. So it was perfect. And then it's been sky fell, fell into line. Right. Now you are a top, not only a top streamer, a top family and a top agency, which is amazing. And truly congratulations. A huge job well done. Like, yeah. And I built from nothing. Boom, boom, baby. I've never been an SVIP on here. I've never had to recharge on here. I've never had to do anything. Just built and kept stacking and stacking and stacking and, and like exploded. So it's fun. And I like to teach everybody in my life how to do the same thing. That's awesome. Now, how long have you actually been on Beagle for? How long have I been on Beagle for? I've been on Beagle. Yeah. How long? So as a host, I've been on here for a year and seven months, and I was on here prior to that, you know, two months just watching the show because my my ex was one of the top hosts here in Canada, um, and she, uh, you know, she was a host before me, and I just watched how she did everything. How many hours a day you say you Bigo between your lives? Well, how many live hours do you do? So I do, so I do my, so I do my, now I do my two hours live, but watching Bigo, you know, I'm actually, I always have my phone in my hand, no matter what. So my phone's in my hand. I'm in doing what I'm doing. No matter where I'm at, I'm going to be in the grocery store. I'm still watching Bigo. I'm, you know, keeping up with what's going on with shit just because I don't know, it's addicting. <laughs> it's one of those things it's like you know it's like i feel like i'm gonna lose money by not being watching what's going on right so it, it's crazy like i go like to check a text instead of hitting like the text icon i'm hitting bigo instead of hitting instagram i'm hitting bigo i go to make a call i hit bigo accident it's just i never has an addiction it's so hard yeah i just love it i am well, that's i thing. am the poster child and i i, mean, well, I spend down. And I spend a good, you know, four or five hours just in my WhatsApp alone. You know, that's off of Beagle. Just, oh, yeah. Family you know, monitoring everything. and stuff, you know, writing messages, making sure everybody's set, whatever they're doing. So it's, yeah, it is a full-time job. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, there is. But it's worth it. So best, it is, it is. Best experience being on Beagle. Like the highlight, the highlight. Of the crown. Oh shit! I've had so many highlights on here. Um, you know, I, I've won Canada top host. You know, back to back to back. Uh, those were those were fun. Those tournaments. Um, sorry, China beating China in the um, battle royale. That was probably one of the biggest things because that was a brand new host and. They didn't expect it. So that was one of those things that just, you know, came out of nowhere. That was one of the moments. Um, there's been so many big moments here on Beagle that uh, it's, it's hard to wrap it all because, you know, every day is a new new milestone, right? So it's like I just hit 40 million beans the other day. So that's one of those things that. Uh, Congratulations. That's yeah. huge, a huge achievement. Yeah. Truly, that is huge. And guys, if you don't know, that is freaking amazing. Like, amazing. Congratulations. Okay. Worst experience on Bigo. Worst experience on Bigo? I broke my phone. I couldn't get my, I couldn't get my password and they wouldn't unlock me. So I was unlocked for, or I was locked up for like five, six, seven days. It was like six or seven days. 
And I thought I lost everything, right? And then eventually they freed my account and they gave it to me on another phone. But it was because my my number was gone and I didn't have that number. Um, so that was my worst experience. I thought I thought I lost everything. I thought I was losing all my money. I, we just got paid and I got locked out. So I was like, oh, shit. Right? I so, just got chills for you. I literally <laughs> just got chills, people. I got chills. Oh, my God. Nice. Make sure y'all know your 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 password and your you got your phone number and your the make and model of your phone. Screenshot that so then you have that. Guys, if you're just coming in, be sure you're following that on myself by the amazing, talented top host, the professional basketball playing 2020. Guys, if you're finally sharing, tap that screen. Guys, get all them shares, tap that screen, show that love. Welcome once again to Spill Tea with Alicia G and our featured guest, 2020. Who would you say your best friend here is on Vigo? So everybody knows my best friend and it's the most controversial person on Vigo, which is God Zeus. You know, so me and God Zeus are, you know, we, we clicked right off the beginning. So, you know, he's my go-to and, you know, we roll as a partner, as a team through everything so that's the you know i'm the man behind him he he's he's the content i'm the one that hones him in and teaches him all the business stuff but he, he's the content right you, you can't control him right because he'll just say whatever first thing comes to his mouth he just did a live host yesterday that had me on the floor crying because he went into a wellness live host and they were talking about you know weird stuff herpes and all the stuff i was like, oh my god <laughs> I honestly have never talked to Zeus. I don't even know if he knows who I am. Oh, he knows who you are. I honestly don't think he knows. He knows who you are. Oh, really? He watches because he watches watches everything. He knows knows all the top people that are going on. He knows how to watch the star list. Oh, I'm this little. He knows who you are. I'm this little AG. I'm this little me. (laughs) No, he's a laugh a minute. He's so talented. I just, I never talked to him. I would love to get him on here one day. I would. Not oh, and, he, and he'd be professional too, right? He, he's very professional when it comes to interviews. Um, you know, what you see on the camera, obviously he's doing it. He is crazy in real life, but he knows how to be professional. So he'd be a good person to get on here as well. Maybe you could put in a little good word for me after. Oh, yeah. I will. Maybe. I kind of like Thank you. manage him, so I could probably get him all set up. <laughs> Now that'd be some. We'd knock over the cup with him. Yeah, I'll just say, hey, let it go live at this time, and he'll go live. <laughs> so you want to learn? Best friend is Zeus. Follow. <laughs> yeah, best friend is Zeus. Yeah. How um, did you ever get caught up in the drama of Bigo? Oh, I've had drama. I've had you know uh, fights with. Uh, a lot of broadcasters on here, like big broadcasters, obviously they come for me, they come for people in my family. So I stand up for, you know, them. Um, and yeah, well, of course I'm going to get caught in the drama. It's just part of it that goes on here, but I keep it professional. Like my live is all about professional. Um, so I'm not really like the drama one. I'll end the drama just by, you know, doing it. Um, but yeah, we got, we got, drama all the time we still got ongoing drama it's just it is what it is it's beagle i knock on wood one two three knock on some wood guys down and knock there morning wood um i don't do drama yeah i don't i you never I just have fun do your own thing bless you it's one of those things as a family leader on here you get the drama because you know I get drama from people that join my family and then the family that they were in before don't like that they join my family. So they'll tell me to kick them or do this or do that. And I'm always the type of person is whatever you've done in the past until you've done that to me, I don't care. You know, it's about business. It's about making money. We're all on here to make money. So I can turn around a lot of people. I've took a lot of those Facebook personalities, brought them into my family and taught them how to get to that million tier, taught them how to get to that 2 million tier. Right. So, I I like the drama to watch it, so it's all about uh, you know, it's fun to me. It's fun. 
about the views and the ratings, right? All about the views and the ratings, guys. Yeah. How did you get your name 2020? So, uh, before, before I was 2020, when I first got on Beagle, my name was Hollywood Don. So that was what, before I was a host. And once I became a host, I, you know, it was January, uh, like January 1st when I decided to become a host. And I was like, yo, it's, it's the year 2020. So I might as well, um, change my name to 2020. I didn't see nobody else with it. Thought it was, you know, thing. And then all of a sudden it, it blossomed into, you know, cause my, my first original Beagle ID was Liquid Dreams. And then I switched it from Liquid Dreams to Perfect Vision, you know, because, you know, with 2020 vision and having all that. So it just fit the bill. It was just one of those things that just worked. Do you worked. have Perfect Vision? I got Perfect Vision. Perfect Vision? I got Perfect Vision. Oh, I was going to ask you that. That is yeah. awesome. That is awesome. Um, best advice you give to a new streamer? Just be yourself and don't worry about what anybody else says about you. If people come into your room, you know, you're going to get trolls. You're going to get people that don't like you. You're going to get people think just look past that because you're going to, you know, for every one negative person, there's five positive ones. So just keep, keep doing what you're doing. And, um, you know, you know, don't give up. A lot of people give up. They're like, oh, this is too hard. This is too hard. But you never know. Every time you turn on your stream, somebody can come into your live and they can bless you. And then all of a sudden you can blossom into a, a great business relationship and, you know, so just don't give up. Very, very true. The best is yet to come just the loot. And spicy. Thank you, spicy. Guys, be sure you're following, sharing, tapping on that screen, guys. Um, all right, all right. So, a little birdie told me they're getting married. Who and where did you meet this lucky lady? So... It's somebody I knew from, you know, the past. Like, I was in a relationship. It went sour. You know, it was the, my kid's parents or my my, my kid's uh, mom. And it went sour. She she was on the app, but then she she left the app. She got personal problems. But, um, and then, you know, I was like, what am I doing? I'm a single father now. I got my two kids with me. I actually have, you know, the five kids, but I had the, the two kids, the younger kids with me, right? Because the other ones went to their grandparents. So I was like, just looking, I, I put it on Facebook one time. I was like, yo, I'm back. I'm, I'm single and I'm back. And then people just out the woodworks hit me up. And then she hit me up and you know, we went out for, for a drink and dinner. And then, yeah, it just blossomed from there. And then I just seen how she was, so it was just perfect. Like she just took my kids in, like they were her kids. So that's awesome. Congratulations. So when is the big day? Is it going to be a big venue? What type of venue? So and yeah, so actually, and yeah, two days ago I just plopped down eleven thousand and some change on the venue, and so it's got so it's a one stop venue where, you know. They're going to have, you know, all, all the linens, all the, you know, the dry ice, the, the light in everything. So it's, uh, definitely it's a one-stop shop. The DJ is included the, you know, the dinner. Oh so, um, yeah, but it's not till May 1st, 2022. And I'm going to do it live on Beagle, kind of like how Brooke did with her wedding. I'm going to do that. It's going to say 2020 oh live on Beagle. You're going to see the phone set up. It's gonna be crazy, cause I'm gonna go. In, I'm gonna ball. I will be tuning in. I'm gonna ball out here. I will definitely tune. As long as, as long and as. Is it, true? is it true? Zeus is gonna be uh, your best man. So Zeus will be flying out yet, and uh, he'll be part of the wedding. Oh my goodness! Logan. Yeah, <laughs> I know. So <laughs> that's gonna make me nervous, just cause everybody knows what type of person <laughs> Zeus is. So for him to say a speech at my wedding is going to be scare the shit out of me. Because <laughs> all the people in, in my real life are going to be like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> okay, so he went over from, you know, beginning from the high school to pro basketball. 
to Vigo to upcoming wedding here. We'll cover a few more simple ones and then we're gonna spill some tea. Are you ready? Yeah. Do you like to cook? And who does the cooking? You or the one special person to be? So I like to cook. So I'm you know, I was a single father okay. for you know, some years, so I cook, you know, I, I barbecue like crazy. I, I'll, I'll cook inside the house. Summertime, more of the barbecuing because I don't want to heat up the house. But, you know, in wintertime, I like to cook. I like to bake. You know? So I'm definitely uh, one of those type people. Okay. Favorite type of music? And I'm a rap. Favorite song? Uh, so okay. I like rap and... Um, Justin Bieber. Sure do, Chef. You know I like my Justin Bieber. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, I'm so I like rap, rap music, and it's just uh, whatever's going on. You know, I like Eminem, Snoop, all that. So I'm an old school. I, old, I, like the old school. I don't like I don't like any of that uh, mumble rap that's going on nowadays. I I know what you mean. No, I got gotcha. you. There's a song called Peaches by Justin Bieber. So listen to it. That's one of the one of his best songs ever. If if you had a superpower, what would it be? A superpower? Um shit. Probably probably speed. I'd wanna I'd wanna be able to get to one place real quick and then get back to where I got to be. So it'd be speed. It'd be like flash. Boom, boom with the zoom, zoom coming hot. That's 2020 on That's the like court. the bolt Let's go. <laughs> okay. What does Mr. 2020 do in his free time if he's not on Vigo or with his children? I like to spend money. I'm a shopper. So... I have, uh, I have a hat and to match every pair of shoes. I have a shirt to match every pair of pants. I go shopping. I fill up my wardrobe. I throw. I actually give away my wardrobe every season, and I go do it again. It's very honorable. It's very nice. Yeah. Like I love I like Amazon. I think Amazon knows the route to my house. Like I love love Amazon. Like I. Online shopping. Oh my God. I'm always on Amazon. Like, I love it. Yeah. See, that I, see, and that's what killed me because we were locked down here in uh, Ontario for like the longest, right? And I'm a, I'm not an Amazon type person. I like, yeah, that's a whole new Blue Jay Warriors, spicy gums. Um, but um, I like to touch and, you know, look at my clothes and feel them before I buy them, right? So I'm that type of person. Have to make sure I it fits right. Because well, everything like right. Amazon, I feel like it's either a knockoff or something's going on where, you know, it's too small. You you wash it once, it goes away. Yeah. Definitely. All right, you ready to have some fun, guys? Fill that tea. Guys, you're following, sharing, chat on that screen. You're sure you're following the amazing 2020 in the house and myself, Alicia G. All right, you said you're a ladies' man. Have you ever dated more than one female at the same time? Oh yeah, yo, yeah. Oh, that was so I've, I've been, yeah, I've had my player days. I've been, you know, a player. So yeah, I've I've dated more than one girl at one time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Worst date experience or craziest date what's the craziest thing you ever encountered on a date so worst date so obviously i went out for dinner with a with a lady and then you know we ended up going going back to her house and doing what we do the morning time comes <laughs> and tell me i leave the room and her husband's sleeping on the couch I was like, oh, my God, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I had no idea that she was even married. So that's the, the craziest thing that ever happened to me. And the husband didn't even care. 
<laughs> that was that was the whole thing. I just walked out, and he's like, "Oh, he didn't say nothing." Oh to me. My God. And ladies and gentlemen, in the comments, you can chime in. You're more than welcome to chime in, guys. So don't be. Surprised. But it was definitely one of those things. Yes, yes, it is. He was probably uh, listening. To you. Yeah, he probably was. That's why it was so weird. I don't know if he was hiding in the closet or what, because there's some people that like to to do that, and that that was weird to me. When I woke up, I was sh I was shocked more than the husband was shocked. How many dates have you ever went on in one day, or how many girls have you been in with on the same day? So obviously, um, you know, college is, was a crazy experience. Um, so I've been in, you know, I've had orgies and I've had done that and I've been, you know, you know, with two or three girls at one time. So I've, I've had that before. So that's, that's one thing, but like for, to like date somebody, I've never dated somebody then brought her home and then did that. Right. So I've never done that. I never dated somebody like one on, brought her home and then went and dated somebody else. No. This has all been like, you know, you. party for the moment. Okay, we're going to do what we do and just have fun with it. Tim goes, my man. Kathy, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> have you ever gone uh, skinny dipping? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I went skinny dipping in the lake. Um, lots of times we went skinny dipping in the lake. You know, that's just one of the part of the things that you do, especially here, because there ain't nothing really to do, right? So you just go skinny dipping and you know, Lake Erie. What is something you ever did to an ex? What's the worst thing you ever did to an ex girlfriend? Worst thing I ever did to an ex girlfriend. Um, so I had an ex where you know, she ended up cheating on me and little as you know, I'm the one that got her apartment. It was in my name thing. So the next day I got the locks changed and all her stuff was thrown out onto the street because it was my apartment, even though I didn't live I, there. I would have done the same thing. Yeah. So, I would have done the same thing. So. so then she had nowhere to go and all her stuff <laughs> and it was just there. So, so wherever she was with her little boyfriend at the time. Yeah, when she came home, she found all her stuff on the street. Have you ever creeped on an ex's social media? Oh, yeah. I do it all the time. Like, I'm, I get, you know, I don't really have bad breakups. So, you know, I still have all my exes on my social media. Um, so I see their profile pics and I see that. And, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll look at it and be like, okay, yeah, see, oh, you're doing good or, you know, see, look who you with now. Holy fuck. Right? So it's one of those things. Okay, okay. I'm a Gemini. Um, and guys, if if you have any questions in the comments, you're more than welcome to chime in here. We're spilling some uh, fun, juicy tea with uh, 2020. If you're following, sharing, type that screen, and welcome to Spill the Tea with Alicia GM, the wild ladies man, 2020. <laughs> no, I'm gonna switch the name. Uh oh, <laughs> what up, JD? Have you ever been to a gentleman's club? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been to a few. So, where I live in Windsor, Ontario, it's we have maybe six or seven uh, gentlemen clubs, and you know that's the thing you do, right? You're like, oh shit, we're going to the going to the regular bar, and then we're going to the strip club. Um, and it's just one of those things. So, yeah, I've been to all, we even have one that's called Teasers. And it's, you know, all the ladies in there are like 55 plus. <laughs> so you get the, you get the I entire thing. That just, you still don't want to give it up and they're still going. I take it you have received uh, some lap dance. Have you ever given a lap dance? I've never given a lap dance. No, I don't. To me, yeah, I'm more of the manly man. So, yeah, I'm not going to give a lap dance, do all that stuff. No. 
what's the most you ever spent at the strip club? Uh, I've had some wild nights, just regular clubs. You know, I've been out there and spent, you know, you know, up to $2,000 in the club, you know, just buying bottles and, you know, with the VIP, um, strip club. Not really, you know, I don't really, I don't really like that because I like the, I've always had the, you know, the entourage with me. Like we've, we got a, a lot of people that usually come out with us. So it's not where it's, um, I'm going to go buy lap dances or go s send money to the girls and stuff like that. Nah, usually the girls come with us to the strip club and we just go have fun because it's cheap food there, right? You get cheap chicken wings. <laughs> Are you planning on having a bachelor party before the big day? And is Zeus oh, yeah. going to give you a little dance? Oh. Well, that's the thing. So Robert Hood that's in the comments here, um, he's going to fly down from New York as well. He said he's coming for the bachelor party, okay. him and Zeus, because him and Zeus has already been partying together before. So I couldn't even imagine going out with Zeus to the club. Um, but it's going to be one of those bachelor parties, probably going to be like the hangover. Hopefully I don't get locked on a roof, but hanging with Zeus is going to be pretty crazy. <laughs> what happens at the bachelor party? We'll stay at the bachelor party. Yeah. Well, I told, yeah, I already told Robert Hood he's sleeping in the room with Zeus because Zeus ain't going nowhere near my room, especially if we're drinking. <laughs> oh, God. Um, okay. Guys, if you have any other questions, please feel free to chime in. This is your chance, guys. We have an exclusive interview here with 2020. Spill that tea. Boom, boom, baby. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and it's going by pretty quick, too, right? We've already done 51 minutes of this. Yeah. And this is her show, so make sure you all follow Alicia. Everybody that's in my room, make sure you follow her. She's a big broadcaster on here. She's been on here doing it. She hits her $3 million every month. Make sure you follow her as well. You can watch some big PKs. And she's got the okay. biggest Bebo collection in Bebo. So if you see how I got all these dinos, she's got millions of them. <laughs> we actually just hit 2.65 million followers. Wow. So see? That is amazing. That is amazing. I'm in the and that's the thing. I wish I was in America just so I can get all them damn followers. Here in Canada, it's hard to get the followers, so I wish I was in America to get them. But uh, that's all right. 2.65 million followers. That's dope. So make sure you follow her. And then you go listen to her, her rap song, too, right? You got your own rap song? I I do. I have my own music. <laughs> um, I do. I do. Um, pop, hip hop, and I'm actually breaking into the country pop genre actually right now. Oh, nice. So, yeah, so nice. we'll check her out. A distribution deal with Sony right now. So, one right. day at a time, the best yet to come is believe. Yeah. So, it's just not the ladies' so, man's uh, thing. The, the, I don't even know. I was going to say ladies' man. She gets the fellas, y'all. <laughs> Do you man, do you man, uh, what, what does Tim call it? Man, uh, do you manscape? I manscape. Oh, Tim yeah. Okay, Tim, there you go. He there. wants you to ask that question? Manscapes. <laughs> yes, he did. Oh, yeah, we keep it fresh. You know, I'm always lined up and I'm always thing. So we keep everything fresh. You never know what can happen. Um, what well, I you Let's see, let's see, let's see. Guys, if you have any other questions, please chime in. This is your time. We have an exclusive here with 2020 himself. Yeah, this is 2020 tells all. I only play tells all, guys. baseball currently. And you guys are going to be able to see that. So every Sunday night, I'll be live on Beagle. I'm going to have my phone set up, and you all be able to watch the games. There will be no alcohol there, so we'll get away with it. That's the only thing you, you got to worry about, right? Like, especially, you know, like a, a wedding reception, people coming in the camera with alcohol and get you banned, right? I, so these sports, we can do it. I'm glad that, uh, you know, our restrictions are lifted. So 
I'll be bringing that that content to to Beagle, especially when I get back in the gym and I start teaching the kids. You'll see that content as well. Tim here wants to know, um, back in the comments, what do you say? How many Beagle girls have you? Uh, we'll make it a little easier. How many Beagle girls have you seen their tatas? <laughs> um. So I get a lot. So my inbox is flooded. You know, they send me some crazy, crazy pics, or they send me, you know, anything from. Um, I've seen a lot of top broadcasters. We'll just put it that way. <laughs> a lot of them, a lot of them want to, you know, play friendly with me, for me to show up to their PKs. Mainly overseas or U.S. Uh, mainly overseas and then um, here in Canada. Okay, okay. Um, any other top broadcaster you'd ever want to PK against? Oh, anybody that wanted to, you know. Go against... Ever challenge. Oh, to challenge? Oh, yeah, Primo. Primo all day. That's who I've been trying to get forever. I want to. You know, wipe the floor with Primo. Other than that, or or pretty Hishi. But other than that, that's it. I'm sure we're getting. Because that's just an arrival since uh, I first started, right? But I don't think he's a, a broadcaster like that anymore, anyways. Um, I had a question from Zeditor come in asking if you'd ever do the Bigo bachelor yeah so i was the beagle bachelor um that was just i changed my name to the bachelor right when i was single and doing all that but uh the beagle bachelor would have been fun but now i can't do that right so now it's uh i can oversee it be a producer but I guess just guess guess judge or something yes judge yeah the man is he's He's engaged, people. He's engaged. <laughs> All right, guys. Any other final questions you can think of? Do you have any tattoos? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, actually, tomorrow, I'm going to be in the tattoo studio from 12 o'clock to 4 o'clock, finishing up my, my sleeve. Uh, I got I just got these roses done um, and this lion. So this arm is getting done tomorrow, and it's going to be all this for the rest of it. But oh I got lots of tattoos. So my neck is done. Everything's done. My back is done. I have no tattoos. I have none. You have none? Uh, they get a different, none. right? So the more you get, the once you start getting them, you just want to make sure that it fills up and it looks good. So you just want to keep going. Absolutely. I mean, I had my tongue pierced before. <laughs> my cartilage. Here, here, the belly button, but yeah, I've, yeah, I've never done any never of the, the piercings. The only thing I've done is my ears, but I've never done any of those facial piercings or anything like that. But tattoos, yeah, for sure. All right, has twenty twenty ever got a speeding ticket? Actually, yeah, I got a speeding. I got a couple speeding tickets, you know, in my time, but nothing serious. Nothing where it was like. Uh, they're gonna take my license. Nothing. Just a, a knock of a point. Other than that, you know, I paid my fines and that was it. I've never, I've never got caught. You no know, DIYs and DIYs and <laughs> driving under the influence. None of that. DUI. Um, I've never done anything like that. So, if I'm gonna be drinking, I'll make sure somebody's driving. Very, very smart. Do not drink and drive, people. You're not, and I'd say you're not driving either, because that's a, that'll get you knocked off of your live as well. And you don't want to be looking down at your phone, and smashing into some other family, right? So very, very true. You're gonna send dragons, and pull over, and send dragons. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, if you could pick one song that describes your life, what would it be? Ah, uh, that's a hard one. Um, I 
right now is just content. The song content. I'm just content with life. I'm happy. I'm happy that uh, you know, my kids are safe. I got them safe. I'm happy. I'm making money. I'm happy. My team is making money, and you know, I'm just happy with life right now. You know, we need we need positive. Everybody needs to be positive because this COVID shit's got everybody. You know, I've had so many friends die from from drugs, and I've had too many people die from you know all their anxiety from over COVID. And um, so you know, you just gotta one day at a time, one step at a time. And shit, I'm glad we found Bigo because a lot of these people that are on Bigo right now wouldn't have had nobody to talk to during this COVID lockdown. So. You know, Bigo has helped a lot of people get through it. So just remember, one it can't be that bad. You got somebody on here to talk to. So if you need somebody to talk to about anything, come to my live. And I'm here to talk. Absolutely. 2020, I want to say thank you for being so honest, so kind, so caring, and open with us and spilling the tea about the true, real 2020. No problem. It was an absolute pleasure and honor. And I truly do appreciate it so much. I think everyone here did too. Did y'all have fun? I did too. Boom, boom, baby. Yeah, that was fun. It went through. Guys, you know, time and I got my time. It went I'm, I'm glad I got my time. And your time. <laughs> that was a win win. Let's get a little screenshot, guys. What do you think? Hey, I love it. Thank you, Charles. 2020. You have a wonderful, yeah. blessed night. You too. And, and make sure everybody follows Alicia G. She's going to have another one of these next Thursday night. So make sure you follow her. And yes. all right, y'all. I'll talk to y'all later. Much love. Thank you. Be in touch. Thank you. He was amazing, wasn't he? And we learned about the real 2020. You guys are amazing, guys. He was so awesome. Sure, give him a follow, guys. We're gonna do a little uh, 20, 20 interview that we just had, an amazing 2020 interview with the one normal, 2020. Guys, once again, welcome to Spill the Tea with Alicia G. Make sure you're following, sharing, tap on that screen, guys. You guys are amazing. I appreciate each and every one of you. Make sure you're following, sharing, tap on that screen. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and Instagram too. Thank you. All right, guys. Top five country songs in the countdown. Fancy Like by Walker Hayes. Coming at number two. Wet Dream by Austin York. Coming at number three. If I Didn't Love You by Jason Aldean. Coming at number four, guys. By Dirt. Jordan Davis. Number five. Memorize You by Lainey Hardy. And do the top five countdown here of the pop songs on the charts. Coming in at number one, Driver's License, Olivia Rodrigo. Number two, Peaches, Justin Bieber. Number three, Montero, Call Me By Your Name, Little Nas X. Number four, Kiss Me More by Doja Cat. Number five, Good for you, Olivia Rodrigo. All right, guys, we had an interview with an amazing talent. 2020, we did our countdown to music. We're gonna do a little celeb gossip and wrap it up, guys. Some celebrity gossip coming in hot for you guys. You guys, getting those fan ladders, you gotta be in it to win it. Paul Walker's daughter, Meadow Walker, is engaged to Lewis Thornton. Ashton Kutcher and Mala Kumez hilariously address their uproar over their kids' bathing habits. Finally, actually, they wash their kids. Scrub a dub a dub in that tub. They wash their kids. Little Nas X reveals he's in a relationship and thinks. This is the one. Ooh, that's the luck, little Nas. Machine Gun Kelly reveals shocking new bald look. Machine Gun Kelly shows off his drastic new look. 
to promote his new movie video, music video, for Paper It's Plays. And the rapper also adds a fresh tattoo on his new bald head. The Bachelorette winner, Blake Mays, reveals one thing he regrets. He may have found his soulmate and fiance Kate Burson, but regrets it's a pretty major part of his proposal. Mike Richards and Amber named the new Jeopardy host. David Skinner sets the record straight on Jennifer Anson's romance rumor. Austin Butler and Lily Rose Depp spotted kissing in London. Puzz her up, baby. Coco, y'all know her husband from SVU, Ice T, reveals when she plans to stop breastfeeding daughter Chanel. About time, baby. Five years old, I think it's about time. And finally, coming in hot, Selena Gomez admits that she signed her life away to Disney. There you have it, people. Spill the tea with Alicia G and our special featured guest, 2020. Thank you for being you. You guys are amazing, and I appreciate each and every single one of you. Wishing you all peace, love, positivity, and prosperity. Always remember, all social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and more, all Alicia G World. Hit that subscribe button, comment, like, and hit the little bell. And uh, we'll see you next time on Spill the Tea with Alicia G. Every Thursday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. See you next time, and uh, I love you all, and uh, boom, boom, baby.